Hey, we're set to make action script. Now, for those of you that are going, ooh, scary stuff, action script, I'm gonna make this so simple and so painless, it's frighteningly painless. The first thing we need to do is select this keyframe because that's where I wanna put my action script. Then I'm gonna go to my action script panel, action script panel, timeline panel, action script panel. So I physically selected this keyframe because that's where I want the action script to go. So I want to do what's called global functions. Global functions, I'm gonna basically extend this for a second. Global functions, I wanna control the timeline. So timeline control. Then, like any other piece of information in software, based on these choices, based on these timeline control choices, I want to stop. Double click stops the playback head. It's gonna stop the playback head right here. Okay, now here's a wonderful technique that you're not gonna see anyplace else because people just don't know it, they don't get it, they don't understand it. If I go to the top right hand corner, all Adobe products have a sub menu in the top right hand corner. We're gonna basically pick escape shortcut keys. How does this help us? Now, I can basically use shortcuts to enter my action script. This the shortcut for stop is escape ST. You simply hit the escape key on your keyboard, let go, and it ST. How cool is that? That puts in the stop action. If you wanted to go to next frame as an example, I can hit escape and F, etc, etc. So we're going to show off some really cool skills here by basically going to escape ST. Simple, simple, simple. Make a change, save a change. Now if I go back to my timeline for a second, you'll see there's A there. The A represents the action script. It doesn't tell you the action script works, you can type your name in there and you'll still get the A. The A tells you there's an action script right here. So now if I test my movie, control, test movie, command return, it's going to stop when it gets the frame 10. The animation timeline stopped when it got the frame 10 because I put a stop action there. Now if I want to ignore that code, I can click here and hit forward slash, forward slash. That's gonna ignore the stop action. I didn't delete the stop action, it's going to comment out the stop action. So if I hit command return, it's not going to stop. And it's gonna basically play to frame 60 and play again. That's not gonna help me. So I definitely want to have a stop action there. So now important step here. This is known as a function. You can recognize a function because you have name of the function followed by open and close parentheses followed by a semicolon. Semicolon is how I terminate a line of code. Now let's say you wrote this from scratch, but keep in mind here that flash is case action script is case sensitive. So if you just spell it with a capital S, it wouldn't be blue, therefore it's not an action script, therefore it's not gonna work. Now let's say you forgot, you wrote this from scratch by typing in S-T-O-P, open and close parentheses. But you forgot to put the semicolon. If you click right here, auto format, that will put in the semicolon for you. This basically is auto format. Make a change, save a change. So let's build our application. So command return, I have this stop at frame 10. Now I'm gonna put a navigation system here on the top. Now this is a simple, simple way to do a dynamic navigation system. What do I mean by dynamic? We're gonna populate the button names inside of action script. A simple, simple way. We're gonna pick this keyframe this frame, I should say, and insert a keyframe because this is where I want my navigation to be. I don't want my navigation here. I want my navigation here. So I hit F6. F6 inserts a keyframe. This is where I want to put my text box navigation. So I'm going to go to my typing tool, T for typing. Now, there's three different types. But in my properties palette to the right, there's three different types of text boxes. So we can have a dynamic text box, a static text box, or an input text box. Input text will be doing for forms, name, address, phone number, submit. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do static text. We're gonna do dynamic text because I wanna dynamically populate that text box with information. So I'm gonna pick this keyframe. Incidentally, the intro animation is done, so I can lock that into place too. Make a change, save a change, command S. So I'm gonna pick a dynamic text box and dynamically put a text box here. Okay, I'm gonna just resize that. 
and I'm going to put in some text. Now I come over here and basically change my text. I'm going to make it black, which is fine. I'm just going to make this a little heavier typeface. I'm going to pick, as soon as my typeface comes up here, I'm going to pick Arial. So let's scroll to the top here. I'm going to pick, let's actually pick Impact. Impact is thicker. So now the three names of my buttons are going to be Price, Product, Services. So it's an old trick from back in the day of desktop publishing. You copy fit your longest text chain. So I'm going to basically put my cursor here and type in services. Now services is not going to go there. I'm doing this just to copy fit the longest text chain. So I'm going to, base, to select this and services is fine there. So I can see that it says services. Now I'm going to replace that with the word holder. I'm going to make sure this is in the center. If it's not in the center, go to your property palette. Now, here's the cool thing about how Flash thinks, how ActionScript thinks. This text box, an epic text box, needs to have what's called an instance name in order to talk to it. I can't talk to you if I don't know your name. So we're going to give this text box a simple instance name. We're going to call it nav underscore title underscore txt. Now this prefix here, you can call this whatever you want here, but the suffix is very important. We must suffix this with underscore txt. I'll explain why when we go into action script. So nav title underscore txt. Now my objective here, I want to put this text inside of a movie clip. So I'm going to convert this text box and put it inside of a movie clip. How do I do that? I select the text box and I hit F8. And we're going to call this MC for movie clip nav. MC nav, make sure it's a movie clip, not a button, not a graphic movie clip. Top left hand corner is fine. I hit OK. Now, here's the advantage of what I did here. Most people don't get this when they work in Flash. They would have created three separate symbols and had three separate headaches and three separate problems. We're creating one symbol. If I go to my library, Command L, I can see that this symbol is going to be the same symbol that I'm going to use to create my three buttons, my three buttons. So if you want to change the typeface of all three buttons, you can simply double click. That puts you in the timeline, inside the timeline of this movie clip. Go back to scene one, make a change, save a change. So how are we going to get this to duplicate? In all Adobe products, I can simply hold down the command key to turn them into a selection tool. Remember, I'm still in the typing tool. Then move to the right. As it move to the right, hold down the Option key to make a clone copy. Hold down the Shift key to constrain it. So there's my three buttons. Now, what I want to have happen, I'm going you know, to move this a little to the left, and I'm going to move this a little to the left. Now, here's a little trick here. I'm going to select All, Command A, and it Command Option 9. Command option, I'm sorry, my mistake. Command option seven distributes the width. Command option nine would distribute the height. So wherever you put these three buttons, I'm move this to the left, I can select all and hit command option seven. On Windows that'd be control alt seven or control alt nine. Make a change, save a change. Now my objective here is to talk to these three instances. Very important step here. Once a symbol appears on the stage, it's known as an instance. An instance. This instance, according to my property palette up here, doesn't have names. So we're going to call this simply, this is going to be my price instance products services. Now, rather than torture yourself with long-winded names here, we're just going to call this P-R-I underscore MC. I pick the first three letters. So price is going to be separate from products. So this is price underscore MC. Hold down command key select. Now at this point if it's simpler for you not to keep holding down the command key every 10 seconds. If you want to hit the V tool, the V tool is going to select the arrow tool. Now it's permanently selected. If that helps you, if that makes things simpler, I prefer to just hold down the command key, but that's up to you. 
So I'm going to select this and I'm going to call this PRO underscore MC. And I'm going to call this one SER, SER underscore MC. Why underscore MC? Because I will get code hints, hints of code to come up if I utilize this the correct way, the correct way. Make a change, save a change. Okay, you guys ready to crack your knuckles and get started with action script um again i'm gonna make this so frighteningly simple it's so simple it's going to be frightening now in this particular case this instance name is called service MC underscore mc this instance name is called pure o underscore mc this instance name is pure i underscore mc so i'm done with this layer here so i can lock it into place make a change save a change now obviously i don't want this to say holder i want this to say price products and services. So how do I do this? I go to my action script panel. The same action script panel we use a lot is this, we utilize for the stop action. So it doesn't matter where I start. So I'm gonna hit the return key a few times. And right here, I'm gonna put the code to talk to these instance names. But let's say I forgot what I call the instance names. Well, you can click right here and target those instance names. I can click right here and target those instance instance names. This is the comp graphic that came in. These are the three instance names. Now I don't want to talk to the instance itself. I want to talk to the text box inside of here. So I'm going to talk to the text box inside of here. So I simply do that by selecting the text box. Now I can just refer to this text box as this. Now in CS4, it puts the word this in here. In CS5, it does this. But it's still ActionScript 2.0, so I just want to be very clear about this. We're just going to say we're going to talk to this text box inside of this instance name. And I'm going to hit the OK button. So anything in blue is ActionScript. Anything in black is totally user-defined. So I want the text box to contain text. So I hit the period symbol. And I get code hints, hints of code. Why do I get the period symbol? Because I call this underscore TXT. If you were to call this underscore TNT in the period symbol, it's not going to give you code hints. It's going to give you code hints because Flash knows that this is a text box. Underscore TXT period gives you code hints. Because I hit the period symbol, it gives me code hints. So we want to define the text box as text. I just type TE. Hit the return key. Now, you might say, well, what else would a text box contain? Well, a text box could contain HTML. A text box could contain a Boolean statement. A text box could contain a number. A text box could contain XML. I simply want this text box to contain text. And I want the value spacebar equal the value equal to what? To the word price. Price is a string of information. Strings of information need to go inside a quotation mark. So I'm going to put in P-R-I-C-E quotation mark and terminate the line of code with a semicolon. Now again, if you forget to terminate the line of code, you can click here to auto format. That will put the semicolon there for you. Make a change, save a change. So now magic happens.